Today I'm going to be taking a look at Sonarworks Reference 4 and if you're not sure what it is, it's basically a system to flatten the combined EQ response of your monitors and your room. And as I've been recording this, I've been thinking about how to pull it all together and realised I'm basically doing a science experiment. So just like in school, I'll go with an introduction, apparatus, uh, method, discussion, results and conclusion. So let's start off with the introduction. We all know that studio monitors aim to have a flat response across the whole frequency range and some are better than others, but that's only half the story because wherever you're listening to your monitors, there'll be an effect from the room on what you're hearing. So that's why I've got acoustic panels like this and every studio has some sort of acoustic treatments. And lots of monitors now come with some sort of EQ adjustments and you can alter the bass, the middle and the treble to suit your room. And there are even some that attempt to do this job for you with some sort of clever DSP. But Sonarworks have their Reference 4 software which can be used on any monitors in any room and you follow the virtual step-by-step -step workflow and calibrate the sound of your studio in 10 to 20 minutes. And there's even a system-wide bit of software so that'll play everything through your iTunes or your Spotify so you can reference what you normally listen to to what you listen to when you're creating your track. And I think that's a nice brief intro. I think the chemistry teacher might give me seven out of 10 for that. So let's move on to the apparatus. The first piece of apparatus we're going to use on my main monitor is a set of Neumann KH310s which are pretty expensive and should be giving me a reasonably flat frequency response. I'm laughing because I've already done the test so I know what happened. But these have got three switches on the back, mid, treble and bass and I always knew I had issues with this room. I know I've positioned the monitors too close to the wall for example and like most people you know um, unless you're going to lose half your listening space, you're going to have your monitors closer than is recommended, which is why they have these adjustments. Um, so it was interesting to see what effect the room was having on these supposedly really flat monitors. So that's the playing apparatus and the listening or recording kit is this microphone that comes in the Sonarworks box. And obviously every mic has got its own individual frequency response and each of these have got a serial number so the software knows exactly the frequency response of the mic that you've got in your box. And I'll go through this in much more detail in the method but essentially if it knows what it's playing through your monitors and it knows what it's measured because it knows the exact calibration of the microphone then it knows the difference between the two and can calculate your individual room response. That's the theory anyway but then it can adjust for this during audio playback. So, moving on to the method then, let's take a look at how it all works. First thing you need to do is open the reference for measure software, give the details of your mic and you can see it knows the exact response of mine via the serial number. It then guides you through all the steps and it's really simple software, really, really easy to follow. The first thing you do is find your listening position and hold your mic at ears height, pointing between the speakers. Next, it measures the distances, so you hold your mic one to two centimeters from the mid cone. On these, there's three speakers, so I'm using the middle one. If you've only got a tweeter and a driver, then you'd use the driver. You do this for the left and the right, and then it measures the distance. Right speaker done. <laughs> I don't know how it does it, but it does it. Anyway, it's measured mine at just over 150 centimeters each time, maybe within a centimeter or two from 152, maybe 155. Uh, and I've tried it a few times, and it's pretty consistent and pretty accurate, because the actual distance, I think, was 154. It then measures the distance to your listening position, so you put the mic back in your listening position and it measures the distance from each speaker to where you are. Uh, and again, it was accurate enough, it measured at just over 90 centimeters each time and I've done this a few times and it's always given measurements around there. Measuring it with a tape measure, it's almost spot on. And now is when the real fun starts. It locates the mic position through a series of clicks. So um, you move your mic around uh, and through click, click, click from each of the speakers, a bit like a bat's echo location. Um, it knows exactly where you are and it's really pretty accurate. And when you're in the right position, it plays some frequency sweeps and obviously measures the response and then it asks you to move to the next position. and I think there's about 37 of these. So it takes a few minutes, maybe five, maybe 10 minutes. You just have to make sure you keep the mic at about your sort of ear listening height and point it towards the center between the two speakers. And that's it, really simple. 
So on to the results then, and here's what I got from my first attempt, and you can see I'm in all sorts of trouble down here with the low end, just as expected, but it's nice to have it confirmed. So just playing a track with and without the compensation. There's a huge difference and you can definitely hear there's a problem area in those low mids. It's so much louder down there once the sonar works doing its thing. And knowing things have sounded a bit off in this room, it's not perfect. I've had the mid range on my monitors turned all the way down, which I'd completely forgotten about until now. And I can't exactly remember why I came to that conclusion. I bought the Neumanns to replace a few different monitors I had. And I imagine I've set the Neumanns to sort of replicate what I was already getting, even though I sort of knew it wasn't right, which is weird. So I've done something stupid. Anyway, the Sonarworks has helped me remember and pointed out my stupidity. So I put the mid-range on full and tried again, and I got this. So things are getting better, but the top end, if you look here, is a bit low. So I turned the treble back up on the monitors because it was turned down a couple of notches. Again, no idea why. So I took another look at my monitor positions and I realized that the left and the right were slightly out. One was pointed more at my head, one was slightly behind my head. So I corrected this as best I could. They're on stands, so it's quite difficult to get them exact. And that's brought them closer together looking at this. But of course the difference could be due to the room, especially this bump here. I get one on one speaker, but not on the other in the low mids. So I've no idea why that may be. So let's take a listen to the correction before I adjusted the levels on the speakers. And once I'd straightened everything up in the studio a little, hopefully the difference won't be as stark, meaning it's helped me reduce the inaccuracies. <laughs> Wow, there's a massive difference between the two corrections there, between the, the start and the end. So I'm gonna just double check that because um, I'm not sure if I've saved the right files. So here we go again. I'm gonna play it without any correction, then with the final correction after everything was sorted, and then I'll play it with the original correction when the speakers were all over the place and see the difference. So it looks like by just using the software to tweak my speakers, I've got the room sounding an awful lot better straight away. It's not perfect and I am listening to it in that room, so it might make all sorts of differences as well, but there's a big, big difference there. So onto the discussion now, uh, and it is making a difference. You can definitely hear that there's, I've got an issue with those low mids because there's such a difference down there when you bring the software in. Uh, and I've, but I've no idea how accurate you have to be with this or if minor errors in the height or the direction um, impact. Maybe if it was any more complex to use, it put people off. Possibly a trade off between exact science and usability, or maybe none of those factors really count maybe the effects minimal in the end and don't really make a difference but it's definitely doing something and as i tweaked the speakers they were definitely coming more in line with the software the only thing that's an unknown in the signal chain i suppose is the interface and preamp but it asks you to make sure you're using the same interface to play the tones through your monitors and record them through the microphone so i'm trying to work out if they sort of cancel each other out or if it's just not important uh, as it's basically the whole system that it's measuring. So it's measuring your speakers and your interface 
and that's what you're going to listen to in the room anyway so maybe it just doesn't matter or maybe preamps just aren't important he says as he gets a thousand comments about how important preamps are or maybe it just asks you to use the same interface so that there's no latency issues because obviously when it's sort of doing that echo location it's got to be pinpoint accurate and every millisecond absolutely counts also one thing to remember is that you need to turn the software off in your door when you're mixing down otherwise everyone else will be listening through your EQ correction which completely defeats the whole objective. And I should also mention they can do this with headphones. It's got standard curves in the software for more popular headphones like my Bayer Dynamic DT880s. But you can buy headphones direct from Sonoworks themselves or you can send your own headphones in to have them calibrated and they just send you the calibration file and probably send you the headphones back as well. And you simply load that and you're set. So to finish our science experiment, we have the conclusion. And although it might look like a sort of complex thing to do and a complex bit of software to use, it's actually really simple. Once you sort of, once you plug your mic in and you start playing around with it, it's really easy to use. It doesn't take too long at all. So it definitely gets a thumbs up from me if that was even a thing I ever did. Um, but even if you're not keen on using the EQ compensation, maybe you think it might change the phase alignment or do some strange things with the sounds. It's actually, really good just to understand what's happening in your room so from my point of view this is an absolute winner it's been really good so i hope that was of use to somebody somewhere and if it was please think about subscribing and if you already subscribed maybe take a look at my patreon page where i've got over six hours of tutorials showing you how to program any synth from the sort of basics module by module so a really great resource there if you're into programming and you want to get away from your presets anyway see you next time <laughs>